Hey everyone, Amy here, and today we are going to learn five ways to set up Microsoft Teams effectively for project management. This is going to save you a ton of time. So with that being said, let's nerd out. The first thing that we are going to do is create the team. Microsoft Teams is a powerful tool when set up correctly. And by defining the permissions appropriately, we can set up a team to streamline collaboration and the sharing of documents while creating transparency to save you a ton of time. Especially for project management, the right setup can save you a world of time. So let's dive in. All right, so let's head on up to this plus icon and we are going to select create team. This first page brings us to a bunch of templates. And let's say that we want to just quickly go and implement this manager project. You can see that it's already got some predefined channels there, as well as all of these apps. So that's one way for you to streamline a new team within Teams. Another great thing that has recently been added in Teams is the ability to add a team from another team. So say we created a ideal or our dream team and for a project, then we can copy that team and it's going to copy the apps, the settings and the channels over to your new team and your existing team won't be changed. For the purpose of this video, we are going to select start from scratch. Here we can define the privacy settings, which are the access rights for our team. Because we are managing a project, I want only specific people to be a part of my team. Whereas you can see here that public and organization wide are a little bit less restrictive. And when we want to give our team a name, we just want this to be something a bit generic. At Amy's Animal Barn and Petco, we are opening a new location in Vancouver. So this project will be to manage that project. And then we can provide a description for the team. And here we can add some members to our team, but I'm going to hold off on this until we finish setting up the team. So I'm going to click skip. And now that we have set up our team with the appropriate permissions, we can move on to defining our channel. When a team is created, there is a default channel added called general, and this cannot be renamed or removed. And there are also some apps at the top here that are automatically added by default. We can think of this general channel as a centralized area for the team to collaborate. Now we are going to add some channels to provide a little bit more structure. We can think of channels as sub areas of a project. So that could be departments or different stages of a project. Let's call our first channel planning. And we can also give it a brief description. So this channel will be for the planning phase of the new location. The next area here is the channel type. And this is very important because it defines the access rights for the channel and it can also not be changed once defined. I would strongly recommend checking out this link that Microsoft has conveniently included there. And there's this easy channel feature comparison where you can see the differences between the channels. For this planning channel, I want everyone on the team to have access. So I'm going to select standard and I'm going to tick this little box here so that everyone can see it right away. We are going to quickly add a couple of more channels for the development channel. We want to make this one shared so that other people in our organization can join this channel. Here we can add people from our organization right away that are not in our team, but I'm going to add those later on. So I'm going to skip this for now. The last channel that I want to add is a management channel and I'm going to make it private so that we can only select managers that we want to join this channel. Again, we can specify some members to add right away, but I'm just going to skip for now. Awesome, so now we can see that our team is coming together and we have these different channels set and the icons are also an easy way for you can for you to see what type of channel it is. Now you will notice that these are also in an alphabetical order. So if you did want them to be in a certain order, then you can just add numeric values in front of the name to put them in that numeric order. Now that we have defined our channels into a structure that suits our needs, we can move on to setting up our apps. And we can think of apps as tools to foster collaboration within our team. And in this next section, we are going to explore five apps. Starting off with posts, 
as well as some new integrations within Microsoft Teams. So from the bottom here, we are going to post a message to the general channel so that everyone on the team can be invited to a collaboration dinner. And if we want to make our post stand out a little more, you can change it to an announcement, which is going to give it this nice header that is just a little bit more eye-catching. We can add a subheader as well. And a new addition to Microsoft Teams is this loop component. So I'm going to add a voting table. And if you are new to loop, then I would highly recommend checking out my video linked in the top right here to take a look at 16 tips and tricks for Microsoft loop. Great. Now that my table is ready to go, I'm going to post it in the channel. And now that we have looked at how we can use post to communicate with the team effectively, we can take a look at setting up our file management system. And a great thing to do here is to just get some folders going to provide a little bit of structure. So here we're going to add some building plans. So that's going to be the folder that we can easily add those. We might want to add a, another folder, for example, resources, and we can just select a color that we want to make appropriate there. And now that we have defined a structure for storing our files, we can take a look at our note taking apps to foster collaboration within the team, as well as a key difference between some of those channel types that we set up at the beginning. So we can see here in the general tab that that notebook is already set up. You'll also see that that's also been set up in the planning channel. However, if we go to the development one, there's no notebook there and neither in the management. And so this is the private team and this is the shared team. And the reason that they don't have that notebook set up is because they are on a different SharePoint site. So if we did want to add a notebook to these channels, then we can go and add it like that and just click add, push through the prompts. You'll notice here that we do have that Teams notebook. So if you do want to share that notebook with these channels, then you can certainly select it here, or you can select create a new notebook. We can give it a name and then just click save. And then here we'll have a new notebook set up in a tab for this development channel. And now that we have set up our notes as well as identified some of those differences between the channels, we can move on to our task management. And this is going to be a huge time saver. It is going to eliminate unnecessary questions and provide transparency on deadlines. I'm going to include this on in the general channel so that the whole team can see the progress of the project. So if we head on up to add, then the first one here is task by planner and to do. If you use a different task app that's integrated with Teams, then you can select it here. And if you don't see tasks at the top here, then you can also just search for it. So task by planner and to do is a Microsoft product and it integrates well within Teams. So I'm going to give it a name and click save. The next thing that we want to do is start to plan our tasks. So we can rename these buckets. You might want to make the buckets for the different channels that you've created, or it could be something else. And now we're going to want to start to fill in some tasks. So we can also set a due date. And then here you can assign your people that are in your team. So I can assign myself, or you could even just you know, leave this blank for the time being. And if we add that task, then it's going to pop in down here. There are some different features here. So if you do want to change the status of it, so it could already be in progress. And you know, this building permits are pretty high priority at the moment. And um, there's no repeat on this, but we want this done by March 31st. Um, another great little thing that I like here is that you can add a little mini checklist. So if you wanted to, you know, fill out more items and track the progress, then you can do that. And you'll notice here that it's gonna say like one of two complete. So it even shows a little progress bar. You can even add attachments or comments for a little extra collaboration with the team. Once you've started to fill out your tasks, then you can see your plan come together. And a nice thing that I like about tasks is that you can easily drag items around. So if you did put them in the incorrect area, then you can certainly 
just, you know, adjust them as needed. There's also some great filters at the top here and different views so that you can, you know, see how your project comes together in real time. And even this schedule is just like a really nice visual and you can see all of the deadlines for this project right in your team here. And my final little tip for tasks is to pin it to your task bar here on the left hand side. You can just select it in the apps here and then if you right click it you could select pin. Mine says unpin because it's already pinned and this will just harmonize all of the tasks that you have within teams and to do in one cohesive area. And now that we have defined our tasks as well as given our team a clear structure and schedule for the whole project, we can move on to my last app, which is lists. And lists is a great way to easily track certain items. And we are also going to explore some ways that we can automate these tasks. The last app that I want to show you is lists. And this is something that I would highly recommend setting up in your project within teams. I've done another video on lists linked up in the corner here. And we are going to create a list and I'm just going to select this issue tracker one. There are a ton of templates here, or you could even select blank list or import something from Excel or an existing list. So here we will use this default issue tracker so that we can stay on top of issues that arise throughout this project. Once you have given your list a name as well as a description, then you can just select a color as well as any of these little icons that you would like to use and then just click create. All right, and once your list is in Teams, then I'd also just recommend setting up some rules. So if we open it in SharePoint, then at the top here, we can select automate and we can select some rules. So we can select create a rule. If you already had some rules set up, then you can go to manage, but we will go with create a rule. And I want to be notified when a new item is created. So as soon as an issue is created, I want to be aware of this right away. So we can select who we want this to be sent to. In this instance, I want it to be me. And now that we have taken a look at how these five apps can be set up for an effective team to manage a project, we can move on to our next component within this presentation, which is integrations. So here we have an email in my inbox and it's got an attachment for a welcome poster. And the person is asking me, how about this for the welcome sign at the entrance for the new Vancouver location? So I want my team to collaborate on this. So what I'm going to do is share this to Teams. From this share to area, you can search the team that you want to share this with. Mine is showing up as a recent location. So I'm going to select that. Here we can add a custom message if you wanted. And since this email has an attachment, this include attachments has already been selected. But if you did want to toggle that off, then you could. In my instance, we're going to keep it on. And here we are within Teams in that general channel. And we have this email here. So now our team can open up that attachment and they can see if they want to have that as the welcome sign at our new location. From that post in the reply, we could even add a loop component and we could once again do a voting table and we can just ask the team to quickly vote so that everything is harmonized and in one place. And now that we have taken a look at some of those ways that we can integrate teams into other 365 apps, we can move on to our final component, which is settings. Here we can add some people to our team by clicking on these three ellipses on the team and we can select add member. From here, you will be able to add anybody in your organization. Additionally, if you did want to manage your permissions a little further, then once again, click on that ellipsis and select manage team. If you head on up to the settings tab, then there are some permissions down here. So you can just, you know, define who you want to allow to create and update channels, for example, um, or just a bunch of other options here that I would definitely recommend exploring. And there we, now we have learned how to set up a team appropriately with the correct permissions, as well as explore the different channel types and some nuances there. We've also taken a look at five apps that we can use to effectively collaborate with our team. 
as well as some integrations to utilize other Office apps within your team. And last but not least, some settings for adding your team members, as well as permission access for the team. All right, thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I do hope that I've helped you discover your internet today. And I do also hope that I've helped you learn how to set up Microsoft Teams effectively for project management, ultimately saving you time, as well as creating transparency throughout your team for deadlines and fostering collaboration. If you did find this video helpful, then please remember to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you do have any questions or ideas for future videos, or even tips for project management within Teams, then feel free to drop those in the comments below. All right, we'll catch you next time.